Welcome to the MAM journals. Um, most of my journals are either about sort of general bike interest or they're what I would describe as bikeumentaries about a specific model or range. This video is even more specific where I'm going to be talking about the low chassis, low seat R1250 GS. Why am I doing that? Well, the question that I really want to answer during the course of this video is, is a bike in this specification actually capable of being ridden comfortably and confidently by somebody of less than average height? In order to make the story relevant, I'll be talking about my own experiences with both my GS1200 and indeed my solution to that, which was a GT. And I'll be talking about height and weight measurements before coming back and showing the specifications of this particular bike, relaying what my experience was were like riding it and then finally coming back and making some conclusions as to answering the question that I've just posed. I do hope that you enjoy the video. Right so um, let's start talking about this bike because because it's really part of my shared experience and part of my journey with GS's. I bought this bike 16 years ago. Um, I was probably a little bit fitter and stronger than I was, than I am now. Um, the bike weighs 496 pounds or if you think in modern kilos 225 kilos. Its seat height is 840 millimeters in the lowest position and 860 in the highest. Um, and if you tr if you think in old money, uh, that's the lowest seat position is 33 inches. Now, um, just to make this relevant and hopefully more useful for you, I am five foot seven and a bit, just under five foot eight. My full inside leg measurement with shoes on because I always ride with shoes because that's so that's the relevant uh, measure is 31 inches and I weigh 13 stone now I'm fine with this bike solo um, but where and I originally bought it as in all those days with a with a simplistic view that my wife and I would eventually have time to go away and uh, it never happened of course but now that I am um, PWPC, i.e. post work, post children, I don't want anyone to think I'm politically correct, and uh, we have been away on it, and frankly the bike has been too tall for me, fully laden, and um, when on, on tour I can, I can just about manage it when I'm solo because I can manoeuvre about on the seat. And there's two issues really that I had with it. I'd say it's too tall, you get to an adverse camber um, where it drops away from the side of the foot you want to put down um, and it, it's just too far to go. And once those things start going they're a job, job to control and the actual angle of the bike on the side stand which is fine when you, it means it's quite a lift up. So, which is fine to say when you come out on a Sunday morning and you think you're going to go and do a 100 mile ride, but when you've done six or 700 miles over a couple of days and you're pretty tired in the morning, it's a big lump to try and lift up and then try and swing your leg over the top of it. So basically, it was a nice bike to ride and certainly very easy once it's going, but quite difficult in car parks, adverse cambers, pulling up to junctions. I did actually embarrass myself first time I'd ever dropped that bike. Um, I dropped, I managed to drop it in a cafe car park on gravel. And I lost a bit of confidence to be honest, but uh, and thought, well, I'm, my great plans of us both going away touring may, may not be actually viable. But I gave myself a bit of a talking to, uh, which is a euphemism for a bollocking. I booked myself five track days and uh, got to grips and I thought no it's I'm perfectly capable of riding a bike at reasonable speed and uh, competently it's just that the bike is too big so I, I then thought well I need a solution because we are going to go away touring so I actually then bought this bike I looked at the Kawasaki and I looked at this bike and for me I was really important that I got a bike that I was confident riding in town, I was confident riding in, in car parks and enjoyed riding on the road. And I ended up, as I say with this one, um, the seat height on this is 810 which is 31.8 so I'm virtually flat footed when I'm on the bike. 
and I've actually uh, in standard format but I've actually lowered it so that I am actually flat footed by putting on nitrons and adjusting the length of the shocks accordingly and it gave me more flexibility in terms of suspension for adding preload on when we were fully laden without getting out old-fashioned c-spanners and this bike has worked for me I've, I've, got, I've got to say it's a really nice bike it's 150 brake horsepower nothing like the torque of the BMW 1250 shift cam which we, is the main focus of, of today's video uh, which is from memory 148 um, newton meters this is 106 so this is a faster bike but it hasn't got that low down torque of the GS which a lot of GS riders find attractive but I wasn't finished with BMW and when I go out and see uh, meet with friends I, I found a lot of people had actually had got GS's and our conversation over coffee normally goes along the lines oh yes I used to have a GS but I didn't like it so I sold it so we then have a bit more of a conversation another cup of coffee and I say well what was it that you didn't like about it and they say oh well no, I actually liked it it was just too tall so let's have a look at what the low options give you on the bike right so let's talk about basic specs of, of the BMW because I used to think that the B in BMW stood for Bavarian, but I think it actually stands for Byzantine in terms of the number of choices you can have on the specification. And not surprisingly, a lot of people get quite confused um, when they do it. So trying to keep it simple at the risk of making um, the odd error, but I think simplicity is best in terms of understanding. There's, in the terms of the GS range, the non-adventure eye, the non-big tank one, um, there's this bike, which is called the Trophy, which is more about um, colour scheme. They've got the Rally, which is um, not a matte finish, but similar sort of style. And they've got the Triple Black. Now, if I tell you that the standard Triple um, Black, in terms of its height, is now actually taller than my original bike that was too tall and it's gone from 850 to 870 is now the range so they've managed to make them taller and um, they've also managed to add 24 kilos of weight to it um, over the time which just um, which is about twice as much weight as I've gained in that time period which is quite some achievement obviously it's got the, it's got a lot more equipment on it it's liquid cooled and it's a much more sophisticated bike the bike I've already tested it and it's a great bike fantastic engine but as I said at the time just too big for me so you can have various seat options you can go for the low chassis and actually the shortest option that you can get is not this style seat which is a rally low seat but actually the more conventional split seat um, that you can see on GS is more commonly you can have a low seat and a low chassis and that takes it to 800 millimetres. Now, in old money, 800 millimetres is 31.4 inches. So we're now getting within the range where somebody of my height and size, next size, can comfortably get their feet down. Now, this actual bike has got the rally seat on it, which rally with low chassis would equate to 820 millimetres. But what's happened here is Simon's gone for the rally seat, but had a bit taken out of the seat to probably get it down to circa the, the 800, which is the lowest option if you had the split seats, if that's not too, too confusing. And they did, a company called Core did it. They charged 50 pounds for the service because they used the original cover and just trimmed it out. More extensive changes are obviously more expensive, but a basic change like that, which enabled it to get that low position with this bench style rally seat. As I'm about to demonstrate, that allows you to have great foot contact when you're in the low positions. You can then control it from there using dynamic ESA. Right, so we've talked about the seat height and the low chassis. But of course the other way in which you can adjust the bike is through the dynamic ESA, the electronic self-adjustment. Now clearly you press the button, you've got three modes to choose from, um, or three options within two modes. You can go dynamic, which is more about, um, I'm guessing, compression and rebound adjustment, i.e. how firm or otherwise it is, 
but in terms of the modes, road and dynamic, you've then got three little options on top of that. You've got the minimum, again selected by, by the button. You can then go to maximum, which as you can see the height adjusts significantly when you actually put it into that mode. And you've got auto. The auto is really helpful when you're varying the amount of load you put on the bike because it will automatically adjust effectively the preload for when you've got pilling and luggage. So you have the options, you can change these modes when the bike is running and in neutral. So how you could actually use that in the real world is if you're going through town or whatever it may be or you've paused, you're about to go into a gravel car park, you want to be in load, just pause, put the bike in neutral, put the bike down to minimum again and then you've got a lot more foot contact than you would if you were in maximum and dynamic. I think for most people with the low seat, low chassis option, the auto would be fine most of the time. But as I say, if you want that extra control, then just drop it down lower. I know that I certainly, when I'm going into an adverse camber car park or gravel or something like that, where I'm just trying to maneuver the bike and I do want easy contact both sides of the bike um, with, with both feet, then I would just pop this into the minimum height and maneuver it accordingly. Now you've probably noticed, or certainly the more observant of you will have noticed that the bike's got road tyres on, it's been fitted with road sixes. I've funny, funny enough that is the same that I've put on my Suzuki GT and I, uh, I like the tyres, I think they're really predictable. If you put off road tyres on that would raise it again so the measurements we talked about would be slightly different uh, but as Simon sort of very accurately said, um, driving the, riding the entire length of your gravel drive does not constitute off-roading and for most people I think we we ride them on the roads with the occasional dusty trail at most. The more serious off-roaders they'll have their own solutions and um, this video isn't really designed to offer guidance in that regard. Other specification changes that Simon's put on this, um, he's uh, had the bar risers put on, the, the conventional ones are, are much flatter and that enables, as you can see by the, the photograph really, it really brings the handlebars back towards you which suits well with a lower seating position so it's, you're not sort of reaching for the handlebars. He's also um, made some changes on here. He's, he, they come with guards on this particular model, the trophy, um, but he's just put an added um, protection on there which has helped. and. He also chose to go for the shorter screen. Uh, personally, having ridden the bike, I, I, I think I'd prefer a slightly more wind protection when you're out and about, certainly when you're riding in the weather that I've been riding in, which is somewhere between quite cold and very cold. Right, so how did I get on riding it? Well, the first thing I would say, with a low seat height and the low chassis, it was very easy for both my wife and I, my wife's five foot two, um, to get on and off the bike which is a pretty important thing, particularly as say if you're touring and, you're, and after a few days you can get pretty road weary and it wants to be easy to get on and it, and it was easy and enjoyable to ride. The low mode in terms of the seat height was, I think you'd run out of ground clearance if you ran it in, in road, in low mode when you were actually in the summer and cracking on a bit. Um, but I was riding in the Forest of Dean in pretty wet weather with flooded roads and well, forest the sort of clues in the title really there were quite a lot of leaves and I had the uh, ice warning light on so you can imagine I wasn't exactly leaning it and um, particularly aggressively and I didn't have any problems with ground clearance in those conditions but I knowing my experience from the Suzuki which I sort of push around a bit more even to up I think you'd probably need to, to go into the second of the modes that we've just been through um, in order to ride it, put it to auto, let it rise and let itself adjust so that you've got the ground clearance and the preload nicely set up for riding on the road. And then of course you can go into your third option if you're doing, um, want a more dynamic ride and with influence and, and control over the, the rebound and the compression which is clearly doing it, firming the whole thing up. So I found it a really easy bike to ride and 
an enjoyable bike to ride and there were no circumstances in the probably 220 miles that I've done so far on this bike uh, which I didn't feel comfortable that I could comfortably either get to the ground maneuver it well or crack on a bit when I had the opportunity so definitely solved the the problem this is a bike that I could ride and could tour on um, whilst um, sadly um, my my existing GS is just not something that I would fancy going away again to up fully laden so what are my conclusions on the bike well I think I uh, I had got to the stage where I sort of dismissed a BMW GS as a bike as, as, as an option for me, um, but I did so with some regret because I do actually like riding them. These are fabulous bikes and they sell hundreds of thousands of them. They win dozens of motorcycle awards and every time you see an adventure bike sort of chart of sales, the BMW GS is invariably in there and it does all of that because they are so good and I am... I've really been excited by the opportunity to see if I could revisit and find something that I could actually live with on joining all the benefits of the technology that BMW have to offer and the refinement that they put into this bike over 40 years and actually touch the ground. And to do so has been, frankly, a joy. So I think, but more importantly, not, not about me, for you, if you've, if you've actually had a GS and actually sold it because it was physically too too tall for you and you weren't comfortable and confident i think with the low chassis model you can revisit that or indeed if you've gone into a showroom and just sat on one of the many versions and they all look the same but they all have very subtle differences and you've sat on one and gone this is too tall i would advocate go and have another go because if you do fancy one you probably can find the right permutation of seat and chassis that suits you and enables you to enjoy the benefits of the bike without feeling uncomfortable or not having the confidence to ride it properly so i hope that you found this video useful helpful and maybe interesting and my thanks again to Simon, who very generously let me ride his 264-mile GS <laughs> through some pretty shocking weather and in some pretty cold conditions, which I think was a remarkably kind thing to do. But, and if you, if you have found it interesting, perhaps you'd be kind enough to press either like or subscribe if, if you, you like your information in this way. But most importantly, I hope that you ride safe and stay well.